That brings me right to the oil and gas, because um, that is both for finance and oil and gas. So the Minister of Natural Resources, who has been appointed, is in charge of the sector. The Department of Energy will be transferred to him. We made a campaign pledge, and we spoke at several press conferences that the ministry of the presidency at that time, or the office of the president, must not have a day-to-day -day oversight responsibility. The president at that time did not even read the contracts, but had to sign, had to sign technical things. And we believe that that sh should be done immediately. So under the new portfolio, gazetted portfolio, the Department of Energy will fall under the Minister of Natural Resources. Now, the idea is to swiftly, over the next, maybe over the next six to eight months or so, and even if we could do it faster, to move to the establishment of a petroleum commission, as we had said before. The petroleum commission will be a mainly technical commission because what you need is technical oversight with some of the best brains, and we hope that Guyanese would heavily be involved there with, of course, some foreign help until we can train our people. But let me say this right at the beginning. That the president has insisted, not just in the oil and gas sector, but in almost every other sector, we want to see a prominent place for Guyanese in the management of these areas and in, in, in terms of benefiting from these areas. So that philosophy will cut across the entire government entire government. So this will happen once we have a technical commission, less functions will be. So the implementation of day-to-day -day functions would be done more by a technical commission rather than having more ministerial input or input from the office of the president. It, the, the office of the president and the minister will give more of a policy input. So they will have, they require to clear policies, et cetera, or to ensure that they remain um, faithful to the policy direction. So the policy directions will be clearly there, and we can talk a bit about what the policy directions should be. The president has also made it clear that he will establish shortly an advisory group to to himself on the petroleum, on oil and gas. An advisory group will be put in place, um, made up of mainly Guyanese, who will be advising the president on these issues. So that is in terms of how the structures and their relationship. So we are in a transition, but we want to transition into more technical bodies doing much more of the oversight work over ex well, the oil and gas sector. Now, there are several issues that we see as priority. We have argued throughout it all that there has to be and we made it clear in the meetings with ExxonMobil that we want them to do well. This is directly with ExxonMobil. Forget the sector for the time being. We want them to do well here, to make money, but Guyanese must share this prosperity. That it's not sustainable otherwise. And we will insist that that happens, that Guyanese must share the prosperity, that if they're doing well, our people must do well too in terms of opportunities, employment, etc. And that will be 
the guiding principle, the philosophy in all of our engagements with ExxonMobil and subsequently once we, we start looking at the other contracts, then with all of them. So there are several areas that we have identified that have serious shortcomings that we believe in the near term or medium term can bring enormous benefits to our people. And these areas along, they must be, ExxonMobil has to treat these areas seriously, has to treat the area seriously. First of all, the area of local content. This, the brief that we got from the Department of Energy um, said, we asked specifically, have you moved to develop legislation? And no, there is no draft legislation at this time. They have various position papers. From what we gathered from the newspapers in opposition and then from the briefing itself, that there were others who had suggested ideas where, and those ideas were more beneficial to Guyanese without harming Exxon's ability to pursue its business. But those ideas were not taken on board and have not been taken on board. So the president's the decision was, we've seen that, I re recall, having a discussion with Mr. Paul when he came here. There have been other, um, we've seen a document that he produced. We're yet to study the document, but there has been an outreach to him to look once we, we start working on the local content. And the local content will be in the form of legislation. It will be mandatory on the company to, to comply with, with um, the legislation, legislation, and that must, so, so there will be all the best technical inputs. We want to get the best technical inputs before we come up with a negotiating brief that will be cleared at the policy level, and then we want to engage di directly with Exxon to see that this happens. Now, the president will meet also with the entire local Guyanese community because through series of meetings, maybe with the sec sectors, to listen to them about their views on local content. Not to farm the consultation out on local com content policy to a junior person or the Department of Energy. It he will deal with it directly at that level. They, so that people will be free to express their views. We have heard from the Guyanese public. We have seen how labor is treated, and we have seen how the, the, um, the business, that opportunities that could have come to Guyanese are farmed out to people, non-Guyanese, and these are not the opportunities that are building an FPSO or areas where we don't have capacity. So that has to happen, that the Exxon would have to look at this. We made it clear to Exxon Mobil too that the subcontractors, they can't claim that, well, that's our subcontractor who is doing this, and therefore, in our engagement, we try to meet the local content provisions as much, do as much as possible on local content because a lot of their work is farmed out to subcontractors who operate here in Guyana who have been paying our people um, basically wages that are discriminatory. Not, um, not comparable wage for comparable skill. And that is what we will insist on, that they must be paid fairly and two, that the subcontractors too, and so all of those who have been bringing in people where we have some of the skills, that those subcontractors too, that they, um, they have to observe the strict local content legislation, 
when it comes on board. And the president has expressed a great desire to train large number of Guyanese, that we have to assist large numbers of Guyanese, raise this with ExxonMobil, and we have to find, they would have to contribute to that training. And we don't think the paltry sum of $300,000 per year is adequate, is adequate. So <clears throat> that is one area um, that will be dealt with soon, and this is a priority of, of the government. The second area is the gas to energy project. Now, we, it seems as though ExxonMobil was interested in moving rapidly with this, but the government of Guyana put the roadblocks in this regard because they did not respond, I gather, and we're still to find out, and we're going to get the details later about who bought up the lands on their proposed locations where the pipeline would have come. We have now a couple of studies that we are going through. And so at some point in time, we will we'll get to that. But we can't look at what they did not do. We want to get this done urgently. So we will, of course, have to be guided by technical people. All of this, we have to be guided by the best technical minds. But we want this project on the road as early as possible. And in that, in that engagement, we will have to get the gas at a cost that is very different than in the contract. We are signaling this. So we, we, um, now the contract locks in a price for the gas. That is at least for the first three, 400 megawatts of, of power because we need the electricity to industrialize this country. We need it for, we can generate more jobs and we also need the electricity so we can fulfill the promise we made to people that we'll cut their electricity bill. You heard the president mention that significantly and as much as by half of what they're paying now. And this is a project that has high priority. We want to engage with Exxon. There, of course, there are other things to look at. Um, the availability of gas now at this point in time, how much is available and who will own the facility, whether it will be a public-private partnership, it will be um, advertised and maybe to another in uh, any company to do the whole project and then sell the gas, the power to government at a low cost, or it will be a government owned project, totally government owned. All of those decisions have to be made and they will be dependent upon the resources available as well as what the market offers, you know, if we have interest and their the interests are viable and good for the country. So that decision has to be made, but we want to get this done as swiftly as possible. And uh, so that is, um, and, and ExxonMobil, I think, is eager to move along with this project too, because from what I gather, they've been waiting for quite a while for any, the government to show major interest in moving this forward. So on the environment, this is another area. And having said what we just said about gas, um, we have to ensure that we have a commitment from ExxonMobil that as we sit down to discuss this, because all of these issues are interlinked and they're the key issues in the contract, that are that a commitment that there will be adequate provisions for any environmental disaster. That there will be adequate provisions in the contract and by Exxon for environmental disasters. Um, we have to satisfy ourselves that that is so. And 
and also flaring is a key issue and we'd have to deal with already signal that we don't want flaring but how soon we can get to that if we can move immediately or not or in a map but but we we are we don't want flaring we don't want flaring so that is it but of course there how soon you get to that will be an issue and i'm just giving you an air, the areas of the contract that we are, have signaled um, to ExxonMobil that there are major concerns about. Payara development plan and the field development, as you are aware, much has been written about this, and the government has hired a consultant who is now reviewing the development plan. The brief is that they will complete that review sometime by in a, by the 24th of this month, and we've made it clear that consistent with what we wanted, we said before, that we want to move the production along, get, get, but we also want to make sure that the country benefits from this, and given in the public domain how mu much was written about the procurement process through which the government embarked upon to hire, hire the, the consultants, not just this consultant, but consultants that were advising them, we decided, the president decided that we should have a review of the work done by the consultants and that technical review will guide the decision of the government, but is, we made it clear, it's not, we don't want to, to delay, but all the, the I's must be dotted and the T's crossed. And we want to make sure that on that issue, there's a proper technical evaluation. That's a technical issue about field development, etc. And you need the consultants to look at those issues you know, there is no expertise. It's not a policy issue. There's no expertise in the, in the cabinet or so to make that call. So we'd have to be guided by the review that we got some help from the Canadian government to hire a consultant to do that review. And so that is as it, as it relates to the Payara development. Um, there would be Audit the Natural Resources Fund. This has nothing to do with Exxon now, but the Natural Resources Fund will be very soon either repealed or amended, but repealed and amended or amended just like that, you know, through a bill. But, but clearly, we, ha we have a number of issues with the Natural Resources Fund and one of which is the overwhelming dominance of the influence of the Minister of Finance on the sector and the use of the funds. And therefore, we want to have, as we made it clear, a more arm's length relationship from directly from uh, arm's length relationship in terms of the management of, of these funds. That was our fundamental problem with the, with the bill and the act that, that was passed. I want to say that in the near term too, as soon as we get over this hump, as when the government starts working, that we will um, uh, conduct a review of the other licenses too, that these would all have to be reviewed. And um, as you know, we, we indicated we want to work on a model um, agreement, and therefore the model agreement, depending on what we work, work on, um, and how swiftly we get there, will guide our engagements with the other, with the other licensee, the other people who have these areas. Um, in terms of the lifting of our, our um, oil, we have put a hold on the evaluation of the bids that came in. 
We made it clear in the campaign that people should not be, be submitting bids to an illegal government that was there at that time, and it would be unfair to people who acted decently, the companies who acted decently and did not put in a bid because they recognized the threat to democracy and you had an illegal government, that they now be excluded from the process because they're moving ahead to evaluate the bids that were received in the period when the government was illegal. So we have made it clear that we'd reopen the tender for that, um, that, that contract, so people, all those who did not get a chance to bid, they can then submit their, their bids.